podcast. All right, guys. Welcome back to round two of Thursday Night Modern. Are you saying... Uh, My name is Patrick R. Savage. I'm joined here by the insane... Too, too <laughs> insane. <laughs> That's just insulting. Nah, insanely What's the most great. the insane thing I can say here? Oh, it's like... Uh, Knees weak, <laughs> arms are heavy. <laughs> Thursday night modern stream is ready. Back at it again, oh folks. Oh God! What just happened? Coming at you with Affinity versus Storm. Yes. I, so you didn't I'm want so interactive of modern. <laughs> yeah, we we brought the interactive decks out tonight. Apparently, or the uninteractive. Sorry. I mean, Affinity does have more interaction than Storm. Knowing Zach, he's playing the four Galvanic. Blast list. Oh yeah, definitely. And, and he's definitely got that. two dispatch <laughs> in the board. Did Zach keep a hand without... How fast is his hand? So Zach is one of the players that w likes to keep non-explosive hands rather than mulliganing. I think that's fine, but I'm also 90% sure uh, Zach knows Jake is on Storm. Yeah, I mean, this hand's fine. Turn one, signal pass, pass with a Arcbound, with uh, turn 2 Arcbound Ravager, you also have Drum and Ornithopter. And he gets you ready to, play. to watch Jake win next turn? So, <laughs> probably, because he's going to untap he's with... He's going to. Uh, so he has Sleight gifts, of Hand, Mana Morphos. Does he have Gifts? Yeah. Okay, then yeah. He's, he's, I would just he scoop is fine. immediately. Storm's such a good deck. I hate it so much. Yeah, I mean, at least Pyro's... Uh, Pyro Ascension's version was hard to play, and don't get me wrong, there uh, you have to know how to get to your winning lines with Storm if yeah, you're in a pinch. I, I definitely I can respect Storm decks. Uh, they take some thought into playing. It's not just like play this card, play this card, play this card, you win. Like, and everyone is gonna hate me for saying this. It's not like Twin. What do you mean? Well, so like Twin was a very like, obviously the deck wasn't simplistic, and the fact that it was a blue-red tempo control deck, and the fact that you have to plan out what your opponent was going to do. Yeah. But there were turns where you just play, oh, I play this card, then I play this card, then I win. Oh. Like, that's very just, like, okay. that's not a very non, like, very intuitive way to win. Like, like once you understand how those two, the two cards, like, Pastor Magic, CV Arcturus, and then Twin interact with each other, you don't, like, there's not a lot of complicated interactions, complicated thought process going into end, end of turn... Play my guy, tap your land, untap, four mana enchantment, kill you. See, I was of the mind that Twin was a very fair combo deck for Modern. I think it's a fair combo deck. Storm is just, in the current state of Modern, like, I don't know what Jake's thinking about. He just wins. I mean, he, so, with Storm, you ha there's a lot of thinking, there's a lot of math involved with Storm. You have to figure out, like, obviously you, could, you believe you can go off, but can you? Yes. You he have can. to make sure that you have the appropriate amount of mana, the appropriate number of cards. It looks like he he can so go. So you need a few cantrips, and then you need past the flames essentially. So Jake here is in a position he can go. Right he's gonna writ into gifts. Get desperate ritual into mana Do you That's know the piles off the top of your head? Um, it's probably gonna be. There's one Storm players use, like, when they know they're going off. I mean, obviously, one, there's a Pass and Fames. There's a Grape Shot. If he doesn't have the Grape Shot already. He actually might have a Pass and Flames in his hand. He does. Does he? I think I think there's an, it's a new art, Pass and Flames. That makes this infinitely easier, then. So Jake, if he's smart, is probably going to set up. So, yeah. So he can potentially get another mana dude in play and then burn the Serum Vision in his hand. So here's the gifts. If he ha since he has the Passive Flames already, it's probably just Grape Shot, Ritual, Ritual, Ritual. He can get whatever he wants. Yeah, right like now. it's probably just Mana Morphos, Grape Shot, uh, Ritual, Ritual. Looks like it's going to be Ritual, Ritual, Revival, like Revival, Mana Morphos. So what this says is basically he has a win condition already. Yeah, Jake's just going to run through some spells, draw some cards, throw gifts back on top, uh, pass and, and flame, yeah. scrape shot. And so I now here you... Scoop. Folks, always make the Storm player play it out, but if you're playing a Jake Valentine, <laughs> just scoop. <laughs> Why? If I was Zach and knew Jake. 
I mean, that's fair, good. but so here, here, he goes to every three other instance, mana. though, just play it out. They can storm players can mess up really easily. Not really easily. So now here he gets to Past in Flames into a bunch of mana into another Gifts into Past in Flames Grape Shot? Pretty much. It's just a matter of how Jake wants to get there. I mean, There's right now, he has, he's going to have a ton of mana with all the rituals in his graveyard. Yeah. He just needs to find a way to win the game. He also needs to get up to enough you storm. You know what he's doing, right? I mean, he's playing a bunch of rituals. Like, specifically, do you know what he's doing right now? So Jake's trying to just assemble all the mana he can. Yeah. And he's going to probably, probably put a uh, Gifts Ungiven back on top of his deck with Noxious Survival, and then Pass in Flames or whatever. Well, he doesn't need to put it, up, put it on top again. He can just cast it. There's a Gifts in the Grave when he casts Pass in Flames. Oh, was it in there when he Yeah, right now, what he needs to make sure he can whatever do, way he, wants he to needs do to it. get up to 20 Storm. Because Zach's playing Affinity, he didn't damage himself at all. In fact, he could have. He didn't gain a couple life, but he could have, or maybe. So right now, Jake is in the point where he has to make it to enough storm. He's only at thirteen. You know, he has so much mana. If he gifts, that's three mana. It's a lot of mana to gifts for. Is it? So what he needs here, actually, gifts. So three mana is a lot. He only has seven. He's out of rituals. He's like a mana morphos left. I guess it depends on Jake's build. I'd be amazed if Jake didn't get there. I would too, but he needs to find a way to win the game. And if he has to cast a gifts to win the game, it's possible he doesn't have enough. He only has six red right now. He has to use this mana morphos to get blue. And then he is then going to be forced to flashback past in flames. So what he needs to do right now, he needs to gifts, in my opinion. That way, he if, does need the gifts. Before he mana Vorifoses. So here's the problem. He's going to do this, get two blue, and now he has to... Oh, well, there's the Grape Shot. That makes this a lot easier. So now he just has a cantrip up to enough storm, but can he cast enough spells? Yeah, I believe he can. So we have cantrip to 16, and he can cantrip to 17. Yeah, oh, well, he just found just the other... Did he just find the second Grape Shot? Uh, yeah. He found the second Grape Shot, then, this, it, then it's over. He also could have found a remand there. Is Jake playing <clears throat> mainboard remand? Do you know? Um, most storm decks do. I thought. Now, yeah. I don't know about Jake. Jake. Jake is normally the guy to take the like best list and tweak it a little bit, and yeah, tweak it a little bit, and then play that deck for however long he can. Like he's been playing the same copies of Rogue Refiner probably since Four Colors started. Jake tunes decks very well. He was a he is a Lightning Strike player. Oh, I hate, it. I hate that. I love it. Why? Have you tried it? Yes. It's so fun. It's so I'd rather fun. just have a braid so that way I don't lose to uh God Pharaoh's gift. That's fair. Isn't that deck kind of dead right now? No. I thought it was hugely on the down tick around It's here. on the down tick around this area, but still, it's like, yeah, I don't know. That's fair. I, I mean, I like having one or two, maybe two seems a little See, so in the 75 or 60. The way Teamer plays out, you're not really going to be like... Sometimes you can get into a situation where you each have... You've gotten a lot of damage in, but the Lightning Strike is normally just going to be a removal spell. And it's not going to be pointed at, a burnt, at your opponent's face that often. See, I'm one of those weird players that likes to play, like, uh... Did you ever play four-color gifts? Or, like, a non-combo-oriented gifts deck? No. I'm I not. like flexible... Did your mic cut out? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Oh, can we get okay, it? Okay. Technical difficulties? Anyways, but, uh... So when you play gifts, uh, it's up to four cards, right? So you always play, like, the same effect or uh, the same cards that try to accomplish a goal with different names, so like Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, yeah, Supreme Yeah, Rift. well, it's because you're a gift deck. Yeah, but I just like cramming one-ofs that accomplish the same things that allow me flexibility based on game state and standard decks. Like, Lightning Strike is probably the most so, flexible uh, I like spell I can things think like that when you have card selection. Yeah. Not have, has almost no card selection. That's fair. And Are we so, 
Do we? I it was my mic. It's Ow. it's good right now. So the reason I like lightning strike or I don't like lightning strike and mm -hmm. I like something like a braid over that is because I don't see that any scenarios where you're winning because it's the lightning strike is gonna go at your opponent's face where you're not gonna win that game anyway. That's fair. So if I know I'm gonna use it as a removal spell flexibility in my removal spells. <laughs> Your mic cut out again. Yeah, Mark. so the problem with this mic is that the wire has to be in the correct position, otherwise oh, no. it cuts out. So many technical So if I start cutting out during the stream at all, guys, I am sorry about that. Uh, Daniel I mean, Nelson, help us out. Yeah, well, we're getting we, it fixed we soon, I promise. Oh. Uh, anyways, back to Yeah, this. back to uh, <laughs> back to modern and is not uh, ranting about standard. So... Most of the list nowadays are playing some number of Thoughtseize, usually two. Yeah, I would expect Thoughtseize to be coming in for Zach. I, I would expect Graveyard Hate, Thoughtseize, Dispatch, and maybe a Spell Pierce if Zach's yeah. that kind of person. I think the things he really gets are Thoughtseize, Spell Pierce, and then kind of Dispatch. I think Dispatch is like okay. I don't know what you would really cut for it, though. I think Galvanic Blast is just better. One of the go-tos in the matchup, uh, or in Affinity to cut, is... Uh, Ornithop well, Memnite over Ornithopter. Most of the time. Yeah, I can see kind of that. The problem is, th for me, is that one of the ways you're going to beat Jake is by just having a faster draw than him. Like, having a fast draw and then having, like, a piece of disruption to stop him, like, on one that That's one exactly turn. That's exactly what you need to do. So I feel like you don't want to cut all your explosive cards that much off. Now, I'm not an affinity player, but... People uh, people throw way too many eggs in one basket when they sideboard against Storm. They I believe that. Yeah, so they just forget all the time I see that empty the Warrens is a card. Yes. And people really you can don't pay never attention never forget to about empty the Warrens. <laughs> uh, I think Honestly, Zach it, has a chance of beating the empty the Warrens. Oh, Zach just, can. Yeah, you can just go For like sure. Volt Scourge, Cranial Plating. Yeah, you win. Your Goblin Tokens don't matter. matter. But uh, just in general, when you sideboard against Storm, you just need to have a way to keep them off of doing what they want to do while applying pressure. Yeah. Which applies to a lot of matchups. Ooh, is that a uh, Shattering Spree in Jake's hand? Oh, that's going to be good. Ooh, but this is a... We'll see how much he invests into that Shattering Spree. Probably Although I don't a see a, like, a real payoff card in Zach's hand. I think his hand is like a land and dispatch. champion? I think that's a Spire of Industry and Dispatch in his hand. I thought it was that champion. And he draws ah, Gal Blast. It could be a champion. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, this is like a fine clock. Yeah, this is Three one, two. damage, two lifelink. That Shattering Spree is going to be back. Yeah. Breaking. Just blow up the Signal Plus into Vault Scourge and his hand does nothing. Wee. So he can just go land, ritual, blow up. I hand would bl ritual, Blood Moon. Uh, yeah, I mean, right here you use Ritual into Shattering Spree, kill Volt Scourge, Signal Pest, and Mox Opal. I don't think I you care about the Ornithopter. just combo off and kill <clears throat> everything on his board. I don't know if I like playing Brawl there, to be honest. Yeah, so this is gonna get dispatched here. I mean, I'm sure in Jake's mind he wants Zack to deploy a little bit more. Yeah, so it depends how much... about the Brawl. I think he only has one Ritual in his hand, though. So he can't invest that it's much into Shattering Spree. So if he he has a Mana Morphos, a Ritual, a Shattering Spree. Did Zach? Ooh. So Jack just... Did Zach, you say oh, Jack? Yeah. So he kills the Brawl, and then he hits... But he d still doesn't have, like, a threat. I thought he drew Steel Overseer, but I was wrong. He drew Master of Ethereum. <clears throat> I like Zach's line a lot here. I don't like deploying the Master of Ethereum. That turn. Oh, I don't either. I don't think you need to. I've I've played a lot of games against Storm where I tapped out their turn three, and then I just died because they go, dude, kill you. That and uh, I mean, as long as Zach has uh, the Galv Blast in his hand, he wants to hold it up as much as he can. Yeah. But if he does deploy that, he's just kind of dead in the water. And I'm it's sure true. Zach is aware that uh. So here we're gonna see the ritual. I think he's gonna go for Shattering Spree here. I would hope so. It'd be so real, you can just blow good. up his board. 
Because people forget against Storm that they also board in answers for uh, any given matchup, like Desperate Ritual and the Blood Moon. So, spree, yeah, Truth. Jake was thinking about there, does anything. he want to blow up the Mox Opal? 100% want to blow up the Mox sure. Opal. And now Zach, his cards do nothing. He has Zach's two colorless Zach's lands. Oh, we know. Dark Souls is an artifact, but it's a that's Ravager, a so that's, that's a nice way to rebuild. Is but now, Jake has a way to combo. so he's Manamorphos, Grape Shot, lands, and one more card. I are hero. I agree that I would like the Pats fan to lose because he's a Pats <laughs> fan, but I don't think it's going to happen here, unfortunately. Uh, good old Brady. Says. So Manamorphos. Is that another that? Shatter? Oh, Grape Shot. Yeah, so it's. Manamorphos, great. Is it double grape shot? It's Manamorphos, grape shot, grape shot. I think. So. I like. Is that lethal? Lethal. What do you mean? So. Or just grape shot to kill the Arcbound Ravager. Yeah, I think so. I like that a lot. You just want to cut Zach out of the game. That's not okay. I'm wrong. It's nowhere near lethal. <laughs> I was like, if you can tell me how Jake gets the lethal from that, then yeah, I'm outside not sure of either. cheating. But Zach still has not drawn. So that was that was that was interesting. a weird interaction that you guys probably can hear. So Jake, you you saw that the Vault Scourge was two life was paid to play for Phyrexia Black. Jake was like, why didn't you pay the one life for the Spire of Industry? And then Zach immediately said, I wanted to leave that open. Uh, obviously, there's just looking at the play, it's weird. And obviously, we know he has Gal Blast, so we know he wanted to leave it open. But Zach saying, I wanted to leave it open. I would just said, oops, and pretend I made a mistake. Same, honestly. I hate giving away information yeah. like that. Oh, uh, it matches. This is honestly anyone's game still at this point. Yeah, like, Jake is not that Jake's close to going trouble, off. Dude. He needs just to find more cards. He found an opt. We'll do what I just said. Jake is sitting on another Grape Shot, correct? Your mic's having. So we got a Springleaf Drum. Probably Testing. a okay. Steel Overseer coming down here. But if Jake does have another Grape Shot, oh my gosh. This is so <clears throat> gross. Although I really like Zach's thing here, just build up your life total. Cranial plating would be pretty nuts here. Yeah, cranial. I think cranial plating, or just a way to get this. So he drew, drew the drum, right? Yes. Play the drum. So we could play Master of Ethereum next turn. And now Jake, I think Jake is just one gifts away from winning. That's how I always feel. This like he has all the mana in the world, and he has the grape shot. <laughs> think he needs to find the gifts. Gifts definitely makes things a lot easier, and if you have enough mana producers, it's pretty easy to uh, go off without Yeah, so a dude. what do you get with the gifts? If I was Jake, if I, mean, you obviously I get could see what it was in his hand. I think it's just like opt, grape shot, and then a bunch of rituals and mana morphos. Um... So, Pass and flames, mm, always. Well, yeah, obviously Pass and flames. Zach has been very careful to always leave a mana open. So if you're Jake, you know he has something like Galvanic Blast. That was that was a little loose from Dispatch. Zach. I don't know why he would play the Steel Overseer instead of just pumping his team with the Master of Ethereum. Because Steel Overseer uh, lets Because him he did not want to tap out. Better. Zach has been leaving a mana open the entirety of this game. I get that, but... If Jake had the dude, he would just play it and try to go off, you know? Yeah. So, Iron Hero says that they want to build a modern deck. They don't know what to build. He plays a lot of aggro decks, but he kind of wants to do something different. Ooh. Give me suggestions. Suggestions. Uh... If you don't mind us asking, what's the uh, budget like? Are you trying to just play something for fun, hyper competitive? Like That's a big one? thing. If you want to like actually, if you have an unlimited budget, 
we can give you recommendations for yeah. these. But modern, uh, I hate saying this, but modern is a format where uh, it's really hard to have fun at a tournament level. Uh, I agree with that. Shelling out a bit of money, just because it's such a ridiculously volatile, powerful format. Yeah, there's a lot of very powerful cards, but there's also a very lot, a lot of expensive cards. A lot of cards are going down in value. Uh, like. I think you, there's places you get Tarmogoyce for like 50 bucks. Yeah, Tarmogoyce are an all time cheap. When I. Which I'm happy about. Yeah, when I. Oh! Tasty. Progress halted. Ugh, so. This is such a game. <laughs> I think this is the most I've ever seen Storm interact with their opponent. Storm does this a lot, honestly. I know. But it's always like fun to just make fun of Storm because they don't interact that much. <laughs> That's fair. So here it's we have the really Master cool. of Ethereum, which is a 2-2. Two -two. Does it count itself? Yes. It okay, so it's a 2-2. Two -two. Which is a three-turn clock. And it can be made a 3-3 three -three with Ink Bond next, so it's a 3-3. Three -three. Can... Zach wins if you got Scranial Plating or Galvaplast off the top. He has a lot of outs here. Yeah, so... Uh, he says he has a decent amount of pieces for elves. Not unlimited budget. He could build a four hundred dollar deck in about six months. Four hundred dollar deck. Hmm. Storm's about a four hundred dollar deck. If you like combo a lot, there all of the combo decks in modern that are actually tier one right now are pretty cheap. The more I yeah. think about it. Storm, Car Clan Ironworks is a little expensive. I I'm not sure. Not I'm exactly really call good. that. Uh, if you enjoy playing elves, elves is actually been on an upswing it's recently, and it's, it's pretty and good. It's really good. Um, it can be really mid range though. If I, again, if you like playing aggro decks, so we have burn one, two, is in three, a decent four, place four, right now. Oh, or one artifact short thing. Please save the seal overseer. One, Zach. two, three, four. So if he had another one drop, he could have won. Could because be. you an so you animate the. Ink Moth Nexus. Yeah. Tap that for a mana, and then you're gonna have six artifacts. One, two, three, four. Oh, with the Steel Overseer in hand. Right. Oh. Yeah, that's my thought. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway. Sorry, I missed what you were getting <clears throat> at. Uh, I don't know what Dash is. Dash. Are there any decks as fun as Dash that are legal and standard or modern? For, this is a different guy who's I don't know how to pronounce it, like MLG e -E -S -S -S, sure I don't know I'm, like you're gonna have to specify what dash is do you remember Mardu Scout I do oh my god do you remember just playing on a red dash aggro in standard with lightning <laughs> with fireball recurring fireball on lightning berserker I do I didn't uh, play that deck but oh yeah so it's yeah dash the mechanic I don't know. I haven't played Dash in a while. Lightning Berserker is so insane, though. Honestly, if you just put the effort and the tuning, everything you can make anything work in modern. Yeah, modern. Pretty modern's a pretty wide open format. format. You have to like deal with some very linear strategies, but if you can figure out how to deal with those linear strategies, you can pretty well deal with a lot. Oh, Jake, this is you, you know off. you're either dead or you're gonna win next turn. Storm player got like, out oh, the stuff. Judge, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Can you watch my opponent storm off? Is a legitimate sentence I say all the time. Yeah, I uh, get the F6 paper. That's a interesting conversation topic. How do you feel about the average L2 or L1 judge at a Grand Prix or Open? What do you mean? The, the competence of the average judge at an open. I think they're game. fine. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. In my experience, about half the time, judges make a blatantly incorrect call, like technically, or policy-wise, or otherwise make a situation much worse than I'm so, before. So, well, one of the things that I feel the need to clarify this conversation with is I'm never going to, like, backtalk or badmouth a judge. Oh, yeah, I yeah. just mean appealing. Yeah, but yeah. I have definitely appealed against judges. Like, there's definitely... Like, and I... Shout out to judges. And yes, all ju uh, judges, for you're great. Because, <laughs> ugh, that's hard work. But, uh, 
I don't know what it is, but lately when I've been going to opens, I've just found myself objectively uh, appealing uh, judge rulings a lot more than I should have. Yeah. To. So, and how often are they overturned? A lot. Okay. So, that's, that's, again, always within your right as player to appeal. And if you definitely think is something is wrong with the ruling, you definitely should appeal. Just don't be a... Yeah, please. About be, 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 be nice kind, about it. Be objective. Don't be sassy. And it, like, no judge is ever gonna think that like you're that you're slighting them for appealing. Um, so generally, like L one and L two judges, r most recently with questions I've asked them, I found their answers, at least in my opinion, to be correct. Mm -hmm. Or judges that I've seen ask questions. Um, one thing that. If you don't think that, a, that something is correct, instead of just appealing immediately, you could also ask, okay, why is this in, the way the interaction happens? And then not only does that give you a better understanding of how it works for the future, but also you then get to, like, they make their thought explanation. And if you can see they're not, like, specifically clear in what it is, then you can, like, be, know, okay, maybe I should appeal this. But don't just go around appealing, oh, this isn't going to turn out the way I want it to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just to try appeal. and get that's, a free win. I'm talking about that's situations really annoying. that are just... So, like, give us an example while we watch the player storm off in front of us. So... Although he might be close to fizzing. I think he's triple pass in flames in hand. Or no, sorry, this is Manamorphos. A uh, specific example, though. So, uh... That's a good example. So here's one. I was just, uh... I was playing a really grindy matchup against a blue-white control player with a Nightfall deck. And I had, before combat, activated my Knight of the Reliquary, all while a judge is watching, yeah. to get a... Uh, um, the heck is it called? Kessig Wolfram. And I moved to combat, and I realized somewhere at some point I missed one mana for a pump, and I was one damage short from winning the game uh, with blockers and everything and yeah. thinking. So I moved to combat, and then I just attack with everything. Okay. And so we move the damage, and my opponent proceeds to pick up his cards, and I'm really, really, really confused uh, because he was still alive. All while the judge was watching, uh, my opponent had assumed that I had attacked with my Knight of the Reliquary as well. Okay. And the judge was trying to say that uh, my opponent had picked up his cards and conceded after I had said, wait a second, you're not dead. Keep playing this out without changing like the order so, of the or anything. Technically, that judge is correct. I guess. It, now, it specifically depends on how the infra like how the cards were picked up like it if was, it was just like he put his like scooped up his creatures put him there scooped his lands put him there it was if, that without any verbal acknowledgement that's still technically that action that's fair what i really would agree with the me, judge there what really got me was that uh because my opponent had said had not said that he was conceding or something yeah that's, and we that's a weird to situation withdraw, i said hold on a second what's going on uh it's like, you're attacking with everything, right? Yeah, I'm dead. The the knight gets in the extra damage, no matter what. Like, the knight's not attacking. But uh, my the judge was essentially trying to give my opponent a game loss because he had picked up his cards, and I was very against that, and that struck me as odd. So, it, it's weird. that The whole thing is weird because the... A lot of judge calls and judge rulings that people have problems with are all, always have to do with judge discretion and that's something that is very left up to judge discretion and that's not something you're going to see have a huge impact based on their judge level that's, that's just going to be that's going to come down to who they are as a person who they are as a judge and so I think that's a little unfair to characterize that as you having a problem with like an L1 judge or an L2 judge. I think All that's right. just. Let's use this example then. You know the new combat shortcut? 
I don't want to talk about the car. That's, okay. that's so confusing. It's not with uh, vehicles. This is I know. The easier. I actually easier. really want to get back to this game, though, because this is really interesting. Jake did not go off, and now Zach is having to get there by infect damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I zoned out completely from the yeah, game. Yeah, so I just assumed that turn where Jake was going off, he didn't end up having enough mana to uh, actually go off. He could have gotten to four, but he had like a bunch of mana morphers to pass in flames and didn't draw the cards he needed to. So he ended up like double bolting the Master of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And now we're at this weird place where Jake doesn't have a lot of resources. He has, I believe, Past in Flames, Grape Shot, Ritual in his hand. So he could win here, but he's at two. His opponent's at 22. And so... Jake can always Grape Shot himself. Does Jake have an out here? Well, again, Zach just drew Blink Moth. So, but he's been on the Influx Pan, so Jake has to win this turn. Or else he's... Oh, wait, no. Blink Moth's a 1-1, one, one, right? Yes. So he has, he has itself. a turn. It can't pump itself. Because it attack has to tap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, so... He has two Ink Moths, not two He moths, right? has... Theoretically has a turn. But he can cast Past in Flames here. I think you... Wait. Bit missed up. I think you cast the Ritual first. So then you have another Ritual in your Grave Earth when you Past in Flames. But now he's going to pass in flames. He has a land, right? No, I don't think he does. I think his hand is Ritual Grape Shot. He has no mana floating? I don't think so. Jake, what are you doing? I'm so confused. You better have another land, sir. I th I don't know. What are those top two lands tapped for? Something... So now he's, going on here? He, I think he, he just passed in flames. What? To, oh, that's lethal. He just drew Arcbound Ravager. Tasty. So now we're going to game three. Oh. That's an interesting way to do Well, that. okay, how much infect is he at? That's the real question. Well, Jake's at four. He's at four infect? Oh, it's 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 on the table. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it. It's on the table. I'm pending Jake does that. So I remember Jake having one, a lightning two, bolt in the sand. Three, four, five, six, seven. So that is lethal. There no, the go. both lightning bolts were used to kill the master of Ethereum. Gosh. We're so attentive right now. You got me off track on Judge Talk. Judge Talk is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't so Anyways, this is relevant to the game. Let's say Jake was at uh Nine infect and one life, yeah. and Zach is swinging with uh, uh, he has an ink moth nexus, a blink moth nexus, and the appropriate okay. mana to activate either. Okay. Uh, you know the cryptic command thing with priority. Yeah. So I was watching opponent. Uh, it was a merfolk opponent against some blue X control. Some kind deck. of cryptic command deck. Yeah. So I watched. A judge call get confused on the judge get confused on the uh, combat shortcut. Yeah, so that I'm gonna s I'm still willing to give judges a little slack on the combat shortcut. They changed it Are fairly you? decently. It's still relatively new. I'm at a point where the judges should know about it, but if they make a mistake, I don't think it's inherently wrong. Especially, I feel like the Manland one has been a known factor for like years, though. So it's still got a little works. weird because everything changed. For those of you who don't know, I'm trying to make sure I know best how to explain it to the people at home. So basically, if you're in your main phase, Correct. your opponent wants uh, to move to the yeah. So you say, "I'm done in my main phase. I would like to move to the beginning of combat step." And then your opponent, if they do anything, they are considered acting in the beginning of the combat step Correct. unless they specify otherwise now that that's the key confusion point there's two combat shortcuts right now there is i'll move to combat which is colloquially in magic like policy wise according to judges everyone i have asked is the same as can i move to declare attacks that is the declared known shortcut if you would like to do something like crew a vehicle before you move to combat, the beginning of attacks, you have to say, I'll move to specifically the beginning of combat. Yeah, so basically, it's all... It's really annoying. It's annoying, but 
why do you feel the need to crew your vehicle in the beginning of combat? I that, that's the thing I that I don't understand. <laughs> if you're playing around someone doing something in the beginning of combat, then they're going to cast a spell in the beginning of combat. And then you get the chance to crew your vehicle. It's weird. To me, it still feels very intuitive because I'm a very... Precise. I'm a very vocal player when I play. Like, I That's say fair. a lot of things. Like, I say, okay, in your main phase, cryptic tap bounce or whatever. And so... Let's see. Double gifts I'm given. That's going to be clunky. Yeah, Ouch. and Zachary has the Galp Blast. Is that a Galp Blast? Yeah. Is that a grid? Oh, that's no, it's a Galp Blast. I saw him draw it. This hand is insane. This hand is very good. And then you just play Ravager. Oh, God. So now... It's so good against Vandal Blast. <laughs> Wait, what does Vandal Blast do? Destroy each if you overload it? Yes. Oh, so it doesn't target. Yeah, that's bad. But J we already know. I don't think Jake would be running both Shattering Spree and, Spree and Vandal Blast. Oh, Wait, isn't he playing Jake Vandal just Blast? misses third land drop. No, he's playing Shattering Spree. Oh, never mind. What does Shattering Spree do? It's red. Just return an artifact and there's yeah. a replicate for a red. Oh, I like Shattering Spree more. Yeah. But Jake misses third land drop. He bottomed both cards off of Serum Visions. This is, this is going to be a, a quick very close game. I Zachary. don't think Jake is going to be able to come to this. He needs to have, like, I think he needs to draw a land right now and then also have a guy in his hand. He has to. Uh, but he drew a grape shot, so he's going to miss his land drop again. He can save himself, but he has to. How can I he, guess he can save himself. Does he have, I don't think he's a Shattering Spree in his hand. What's that very left card? I thought it was a Ritual. It's a Grape Shot. He has double Grape Shot. Or, I'm sorry, double Gifts, Grape Shot, Pyretic, Desperate. Yeah. And so else. because he doesn't have a shattering spree, this he's at twelve. Is there a? I don't think there's any lion Jake can take here. That saves him because if he tries to blow up the board, Zach's probably just going to sack everything but the blink both nexus to her et etch champion uh, master of Ethereum. I guess it depends how Jake plays this turnout though. I don't think he has a metamorphose. I don't think he does either. So here's Ritual. Oh, and J Jake's saying you possibly could go off. He possibly could go off. So he's Ritual. Ritual is up to four. He's Oh, he's going to bolt the Master, which doesn't kill it. And then he's going to Grape Shot and try to clear out the board. Does he do it that way? Why? Yo, yeah, oh, so that was just a mistake by yeah, Jake. Yeah, he does a grape shot to wipe and then see what Zach does, right? So I think the uh, the reason he did it that way is he wanted to get his storm ha count higher. I don't. So there's currently three damage on that S champion. He can go deal one to and there's four copies of grape shot. Deal one to vault scourge. Deal one to vault scourge. So what he's don't doing forget that everything has plus one plus one. Yeah, everything is plus. Oh yeah, everything is plus one plus one. So I don't really know. I think what Jake wanted to do was the opposite. He wanted to try to storm off a little bit, where he could. Well, he stormed off the. He could. Yeah, where he could ping down the, uh, some combination of Ravager and Vault Scourges, and then based on how Zach wants to sack things, uh, it then changes the toughness of. Master of Ethereum, and then Bolt becomes a lot better. Okay. But this is just bad. One, two, th so one, good? two, three, four, so two, five, four. six, seven, eight, yeah, it nine, ten. I'm only counting ten. Okay, and now so that's yeah, it's a two. Four, so, how big is Master of nine, Ethereum? Nine, huge. He's dead. Very dead. So yeah, one, two, three. So six artifacts. So masters a six, six. It's fifteen, I think. And then every okay. Yeah. So as we were saying earlier, uh, that's the kind of hand Zach needs. He needs a fast, explosive hand, backed up by exactly one piece of disruption, Tasty. that breaks up the Jake. The one term Jake needs to go off, and he had the Galv Blast for the dude. That's all you need sometimes. Jake also did have a third land, which yeah, was, that was pretty really helpful. 
But that is going to be it for round three here. At, round two. Or sorry, round two. At Game so Amazing. Cough, cough. We will be back for round three in hopefully around about ten minutes. This match took a while, so long as a fast format, we maybe we can come back sooner. We'll see. And we will see you guys in just a little bit. Don't miss us too much.